gives this bride in marriage? Her mother in law. We appreciate your presence here this evening as we have gathered under the watchful eye of God and also of you as witnesses to join Kenley Seton Crow and Stephanie Joanna Richardson together in holy matrimony. In the very beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he created the light and separated it from darkness. He created the plant life and all the things that grew on the face of the earth. He created the animals, both male and female. And he created the first man, and he called his name Adam. And God said that it was good. Sometimes you may wonder why we read this at, at a wedding, but I love this story. Because you know God, even though everything was good, it wasn't as good as it could be because it said, God said it is not good for man to be alone. He knew Adam needed a helper. And so began the first uh, extra life that was created for Adam. God put Adam to a deep sleep and he removed a rib from next to Adam's heart. And he closed him back up and with loving hands, he made a mate for Adam. And he brought her to Adam, a full-grown woman. And Adam loved her and called her Eve. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Our Savior also spoke, of this marriage bond in Matthew 19 and verse 6. Wherefore they are no longer twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. The vows that you two will make tonight will be recorded in the McLennan County Courthouse, but more importantly, they're going to be recorded in heaven. God himself will keep a record of your vows that you make tonight. Always remember that these vows will be just as binding years from now as they are tonight. They will never lessen or change as long as you both shall live. In the book of Ruth, we read of a special love that I believe would be wonderful to have in your marriage. The words here were, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you will go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death do part thee and me. I think that would be wonderful words to keep in mind, no matter what comes your way. Kenley and Joanna, May your love for each other always be this strong. Contrary to public opinion, marriage is not so much the result of love as it is the opportunity for love. What brings you here tonight is only a seed, but that seed has a promise of a flower. If it is properly nourished, the love which you feel for each other now is wonderful and it was sufficient to bring you here to pledge your lives to one another tonight. But if properly nourished through the years to come, your love will only become stronger and stronger as time goes on. Kenley, as a husband, you 
will have the responsibility of providing for the physical necessities of your family. And of this, I'm sure that you are already prepared for it and you can take care of readily. The more serious are the spiritual responsibilities that you are required to provide in your home. You are to be the spiritual leader in your home and this requires study and prayer on your part. Always be sure that the path that you lead Joanna down is the one that will lead you both to heaven. Kinley, the Bible also tells you to honor Joanna. I like that word, honor. This means to hold her up in your life as your most valuable and cherished possession. For surely she is. Always be considerate of her feelings and search out ways to make her happy, to make her life more pleasant. Compliment her often. Devote your life to pleasing her as you both devote your lives to God. For everything you put into your marriage will surely pay big dividends in both of your lives. Joanna, as a new Christian wife, the Word has some advice for you also. Ephesians 5 and 33 says, it tells you to reverence your husband. To put him on a pedestal in your life and encourage him to be the leader of your home. For this to be possible, the Apostle Paul says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. And you know, Joanna, even though this is not a popular thing in the world today, it does not mean that it is outdated or unnecessary. It's your God-given place, so take it readily. Follow what the Lord says and do it as unto the Lord. Study the scriptures so that you can help Kimley to make the right decisions for your home. And also, if and when God blesses you with children, you can guide and teach them, for you will be there more than he will. And you can raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And lastly, Joanna, remember that your realm your workplace is in your home. The scripture tells you to be a keeper at home, to take care of that home and to provide a refuge that Kinley will be able to come home to each night and look forward to it. I know you will. As we were talking before and I was trying to ask them what they would like to have or what would they would like for me to say, ask them since I know Joanna's dad is likes a little bit of comedy whatever we might say and I asked if she wanted me to say anything that was maybe funny or something and that's not my normal thing in life but she told me a story about Kenley and uh the story about Kinley that I really enjoyed made me think that he has already got a lot of good husband qualities about him. The story was that they were at Kinley's house and Kinley told her that he was going to go and work outside. He was going to work on his pickup or do what he needed to do outside. And it wasn't long before she needed some help with a project. So as she went out to the door, she hollered out there for Kinley. No Kinley answering. I think that thing is going to fall. So she went around to where the truck was, thinking he was working on the truck. And it was not going to work. He was not there. He was not working on the truck. So then she goes around the house. She calls for him no answer nowhere she finally goes back up to the house and Kinley raises up in the hammock right by the back door <laughs> where he had been trying to be as quiet as a mouse and not moving at all so that she wouldn't find it. I think that's pretty good training for a husband 
Henley also told a story that I thought was pretty, pretty good. Henley has an A-frame house, if I understand it right. It's got a sleeping uh, quarters up at the top, a loft that he sleeps in. And uh, he had a, a problem. The, the center part of the A-frame has a crack going from front to back. He had a problem with a squirrel getting in and he would trip back and forth across that crack as he ran back and forth across the house. And that bothered Kenley. He didn't like to hear him up yonder tick, 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 and turn around and going back. And so being as he is quite like one of the Bible characters, Nimrod the Mighty Hunter, he looks around and he sees his bow and arrow there. And so he grabs an arrow up and he times it just right. And when he hears that little squirrel come tripping across, he stabs it through that crack with that arrow. And he got him. He got him. But he didn't know what to do with him after he got him. He can only hold an arrow with the squirming squirrel for so long. So finally he pulls it out and the squirrel tumbles down between the ceiling joists all the way to the bottom of the A-frame. Well, that's not the last of the story. The squirrel died and he began to smell and Kenley had a wall to tear out and to patch back up. But he did it and he can laugh about it now. Just a life day in the life of a crow. <laughs> and now Kinley and Joanna to go back to a serious part. Kinley, do you take Joanna to be your wife, to live together in the holy covenant of matrimony? I do. Then if you will take Joanna's right hand and repeat after me. I Kinley, I Kinley take thee Joanna, take thee Joanna to, be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife to live together, to live together in, the state of holy matrimony. in the state of holy matrimony. I promise to love you, I promise to love you comfort, you, comfort you, honor and keep you, honor and keep you for better or for worse, for, better or for, worse, for richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep myself only to you, so long as we both shall live. Joanna, do you take Kinley to be your husband to live together in the holy covenant of matrimony? Repeat after me. I, Joanna, I, Joanna take thee, Kinley, to be my lawful wedded husband. To live together in the state of holy matrimony. I promise to love you, comfort you, honor and keep you, for better or for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep myself only to you, so long as we both shall live. Kinley and Joanna, as you have pledged yourselves to these solemn vows tonight, with God as, and this audience as your witnesses. By the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. You may kiss your breath. <laughs> Dear 
righteous and heavenly Father, as you have heard these vows that Kenley and Joanna have made, may you keep them ever fresh in their memory. Help them, Father, to speak kindly and respectfully to each other throughout their life, to be ready to say, I'm sorry when someone has been hurt. Please extend to them of your love that they may pattern their lives after you. May they always keep you as the extra person in their home. May your word be always precious to them. We ask, Father, that you would bless their home, that you would put your arms of safety around them, that their road will go up before them, and that they will have many, many happy days of married life together with you as their guide. Lord, we just pray that you would bless them with safety and that you would let them know that you care for them and that you will always be there for them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now I present unto you Mr. and Mrs. Kenley Crow.
They have asked me to announce that there will be a reception right here at this place uh, in just a moment. And if you would, please bow your head as we offer thanks for the reference. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful tonight for the things that have happened here and for this marriage of these two young people. We pray, Father, you would bless their union and, and make it strong and last forever. Thank you, Father, for the refreshments that have been provided for us. Please bless them to our bodies. Be with us through the night. Keep everyone safe if it be in accordance with your will. Please forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. You're now dismissed.